And welcome back to the Huntsman Center on the campus of the University of Utah. The Aggies of Utah State in town. Steve Brown along with Frank Layden set to bring you this in-state basketball battle. All right, let's talk about our starting lineups. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines with fares so low you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. In his second season at Utah State, Coach Stu Morrill, whose teams are known for disciplined, tenacious defense and very patterned offense. And this is a team not the exception for that. Their starting lineup, they did get the 6'11 Belgian Dimitri Jorsen back into the lineup. Of course, we told you in the pregame program about Troy Roll and Sean Daniels, another threat from the outside, along with Tony Brown, who appears to have finally found his shooting touch for this Aggie team. Meantime, for the University of Utah, Rick Majerus in his 11th season, winning at a 78.5 clip. And here in this building, it's much, much better than that. And his start Starting lineup, he's shaking it up a little bit in the past. Again tonight, the guards Colbert and Adam Sharp. So Gary Colbert will draw the starting nod along with Sharp and Jeremy Killian. Basically a three-guard attack, although Killian will rotate to the three position. Alex Jensen, the power forward, and Big Nate Althoff in the middle. And that's the way we'll start this basketball game. So the Aggies feeling very good about getting the young man from Belgium back who's been out with an injury, Dimitri Jorsen at 6'11". Utah leads the series 125 to 86. And at home, it's a more dominant statistic, 75 and 32. But anybody coming into this building, Frank Layden, has a rough road to home. Well, first of all, when you come and you play a Utah team that's coached by Rick Majerus, you know that you're going to get a tremendous effort because he's a, he's a wonderful motivator. Plus, you're going to get a team that is very well conditioned, and in this case, uh, they're very deep. There's a at, lot of players that are alike. Look at the streak, Frank. Utah 38 straight, second only to Duke's 39 home game winning streak. They like to play in this building, and they'll be glad to be home tonight against an in-state team after being tripped almost a week ago in Ogden by Weber State. Tonight's tip-off brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. It's all within your reach with AT&T. Jorson jumps against Althoff, a pair of 6'11 players, and it's controlled by Utah. Sharp on the right wing with the basketball. Killian, and they'll swing the ball. Jensen looks for the inside pass, can't make it. Altoff working hard with Jorsen on his back, and Jensen finds a small lane, turns the ball over, and the Aggies keep it in bounds. So Utah, the turnover bug, hurting them at Ogden last week, and they open this one with a turnover. Tony Brown. Side threat, among others, for Utah State. Good ball moving around the perimeter, and it gets them a pretty good shot from outside, which they convert. And Bernard Rock knocks it down. And if you're Utah State and you're Stu Mario, you, you like that basket because they got it off of defense. They got a turnover and got a chance. Now, by the way, they are now in a uh, trapping defense. They're in a zone defense, a 1-2-2. Now we'll see if they pick up man-to-man. -man. No, they still stay in the zone, Steve. It's interesting strategy, changing defenses on a young backcourt, an inexperienced backcourt of the University of Utah. Inside 10 on the shot clock. So Utah has moved the ball. Killian pops for three and finds the win. Yeah, that's a great shot. I tell, I, for, at first, I thought he was a little too far out. But you know, he's got some pair of arms on him, Steve, and his shooting technique is excellent. But the Aggies really able to play some defense, and Utah had to go for that shot. Late in the shot clock. Oh, they wore the clock down by getting into the zone. The Aggies will take their own time on the clock. They like to work this offense. An intricate offense Stu Morrill has instituted that he came from Colorado State as the Aggies turn it over on the walk. But Morrill's teams at Colorado State were also very good offensively, very disciplined. It's a very intricate offense, a lot of options off set well, plays. You said something before, and it got me to think. And when you said they were tenacious defensively, and they have uh, a, a patient, uh, slow down type of offense. Very intricate, very hard working. Well, you know, most great coaches, Luke Conasecca, uh, Bobby Knight, uh, uh, certainly Rick Majerus, that's exactly how they play. But throw into the mix that this is a team mentally ready to uh, rebound also. 
The Utes had a pretty good look inside, but Jensen got too deep and was jammed by the basket as Roll challenges and beats Althoff inside. Nate holding position, but Roll just climbing right up. Yeah, I like what Roll did. He controlled himself. He didn't crash in there. But here's that 1-2-2 two, two now. The middle is open. You can get the ball into Althoff if you want. They can immediately go into an overload. And they want to test if it's a real zone by sending cutters through. You want to be patient early against the zone. Try to bring him out. Jensen with the fake. And Brown with a rebound. Pretty good look in there. And, uh, of course, Utah State got away with one that time. You don't want to leave your feet. Give away something defensively. Jorsen, sweeping hook off the mark. And here come the Utes. I thought it was good that uh, Altoff didn't foul him that time. Because uh, you, he looked, you went up kind of walk with it. It's the kind of guy you would foul. Not even man to man on the misses. So the secret's out. On makes, they're going to play zone. On the, on the misses, they're going to play man to man. Killian, a sharp shot. I beg your pardon, won't fall. But Jensen clears the glass. His putback is no good. And again, the Aggies got position, Frank. So undersized, yeah. but able to get you position. You know, it's interesting. People always say, Steve, bring the, don't bring the ball down. But if you don't bring the ball down, it's very hard to jump. But Jensen didn't bring the ball down, but it was very hard for him to elevate. And he never got really under that shot. Bouncing the ball off his foot commits the second. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, if he hadn't bounced that off his foot, it looked like he was going in for a layup. He's, He's a pretty quick good kid. Yes, he is. And Eddie Gill last week showed how Utah can be beaten off the dribble. A quick point guard caused the Aggies concern last week, and oh, he was exploiting them. I believe everybody, even in the NBA, can be beaten off the dribble. I really do. I think kids don't do a good job of, of moving their feet. There's a steal. Tony Brown, young man out of Hiram with the scoop. And Utah State has pulled to a 6-3 lead and expect Rick Majerus to want to talk it over quickly. Yeah. And again, that trapping Aggie defense in backcourt. Well, it's, it's slowed Utah down. It's got them thinking. It's, ta it's taken the aggressiveness offensively out of them, Steve. Weaver State did the same thing last week at Ogden, Frank. It wasn't designed to produce turnovers necessarily, but just to disrupt the rhythm. No, in fact, this is a little passive. You're going to get outside shots here. There's no doubt about that. Altoff's tip is good. Well, if you're going to be in the zone, you can't let that happen. They let Altoff get inside, and of course, he's got a nice touch. Altoff continues to get better and better. Altoff is one guy who is benefiting by Metalize's absence, because he is the man inside, and he's improving. And the word is, Hano may be still lost until almost the end of the month. Dorsett turned around shot, and there's the rebound, the aggression on the board. And a jump ball is called with a possession arrow to the Aggies. Well, Raw really went to the boards that time, didn't he? He went right into traffic to get a hold of that one. And a timeout taken on the floor. Five minutes gone in this one. Utah State leads Utah 6-5. You're watching Ute basketball on KJAZZ TV. Book your travel online with Southwest Airlines and you'll automatically get double Rapid Rewards flight credits, which means four round trips get you a free ticket and some downtime for your computer. Drive happy with our friends at Alamo Rent-A-Car and start earning free travel even faster. You are now free to move about the country. You know what ticks me off? Well, a lot. But the main thing is a phony. That's why I like these Arby's chicken fingers. That's all white meat. They're the genuine article, none of those puny processed nuggets. Try Arby's real all white meat chicken fingers and try something else unique. Arby's new appetizers. Cheesy mozzarella sticks, zesty jalapeno bites, and crunchy onion petals. Arby's new sidekickers. There's no other fast food like them. Looking for a used car? You know who to see because you know who has the biggest selection in town and you know who has the best deal around. But what you don't know is that right now when you buy any quality used car from you know who, you'll get free 200 Larry H. Miller Megabucks to spend at the Megaplex 17 movie theaters at Jordan Commons. That's $200 of mega entertainment free, but only with your purchase from any Larry H. Miller dealership and only before December 31st. Larry H. Miller, after all, you know this guy. Just 11 points scored in the first five minutes of this one, but as we told you at the outset, these are two teams that like to be patient. They'll also play good defense, so make the offense work for what they get. And for the Aggies, they are ranked 12th in the nation in scoring defense at 56.2 points a game allowed. 
Utah at 56.8 is 21st. Hard to believe that six tenths of a point will drop you nine places. But both teams, again, like to play a controlled defensive game and like to hold the opponent down rather than just try and simply outscore them in a shootout. Yeah, because you got the extra time on the clock. 35 seconds is a lifetime, so why not work for a good shot? Teams that run and gun better do it very well. Roll on the inbounds play won't work. Jeff Johnson has come into the Utah lineup. Well, you're running out of bounds play. I don't think you like to get a long shot like that, but he did have it up on top. He gave it a chance to go in. Harvey also has checked in for the use. I like what I've seen him roll so far, Steve. He's an active player on both ends of the floor. You can see a shooting ability. He'll pop it from anywhere. And 52% from beyond the arc. I'm sure Stu Morrill will let him shoot it as we have a foul down low. Stopping play, Dan Stewart. Well, that was a set play that got him a three-point shot uh, to get the ball out of bounds. Sean Thomas, Thomas out of Victorville, California, coming in for Utah State. Jensen wanted to go over the top to Althoff. But Stewart doing a good job boxing him out with the body. Now they go back door to him, and weak side help. The ball goes off the Aggies, but a good adjustment on the play by Bernard Rock. Yeah, what they're doing is they're fronting the post people, uh, tempting, uh, of course, what the Rick Majerus teams are famous for is to throw that lead pass up by the backboard, uh, and they're helping from behind. And that's where they make a mistake, in leaping out and leaving their feet. I don't care whether you play zone or you play man-to-man. -man. You play with your feet on the ground. Defensive players should not leave their feet. It's amazing you block more shots staying down than you do leaping up in the air. Because you're so vulnerable to the fake. Stewart outside for three. No rebounders in blue there. The Utes have the board all to themselves. You know, one of the things I thought Steve is... is Jensen puts it in on the miss. And with all that patience, that was a bad shot. And of course, what happens is that now Utah comes down off of that bad shot and gets an easy putback. And the Utes, since the timeout, have scored five straight points, and they leave 10-6. Yes, and you get the idea that they are a little bit more in control than they were before the timeout. Now they're in a 1-4, which means that they want to hold the basketball, but a lot of times in a 1-4, you end up with an outside shot. Thomas, dribble outside. Good switching by the Utes, helping out. Field goal percentage, Frank, three of seven, make it four of eight now for Utah State. They shoot 50% from the floor. Well, it wasn't exactly a desperation shot, but I think the Utes did allow some penetration there, a little bit of slashing. I, I, I think that the, uh, maybe it's because they're so anxious and they want to do well, but the uh, Utah State is leaving their feet and everything. He's dialed in tonight. Jeremy Killian again. Well, that, three. Comes, that comes off that first one. You know, he made that first one. He felt good about it. He he's is, a streak shooter. He's three for three, all three beyond the arc. Nine points for Killian. Yeah, you know, we've talked before. Uh, you know, I, I really feel that the three-point shot is a little bit easy. But Killian gets right out there on the line. He knows exactly where his strength is. Good help by Altoff then. Shot clock at 11, and there's the outside shot of Tony Brown, who had struggled shooting about 28% before the last game against UC San Diego. He finally found the touch in that one. A little more pressure now by Utah State, and of course that... Harvey rushed that shot a little bit. I don't know whether it's because he didn't start, he came in the game. But you know, you came right off the bench, you're a little bit cold, you don't want to take that kind of shot right away. And of course, Rick Majerus is letting them know about it right now. Well, they said there was a timeout, and they said no timeout. Let's see what they do. They're bringing the players back onto the floor again. There's 12 minutes left in the half, and Utah leads 13-11. There's the Killian three, Frank. Good square up. Yes, he, he has an excellent uh, shooting posture, you know. Uh, his elbow is tucked in. He gets his knees down, he gets good elevation, and he's got a great upper body. He is really strong. Cullen is in there now, and of course, he's a good outside shooter. 
Jensen. Jensen with a follow through. That was a nice fluid square and shoot. It looked like he may have released before he got his hips squared around, but he was able to follow it through. And by the time he actually released the ball and finished, everything was in line. Oh, yeah. You could use that at a, at a clinic, especially the follow through. I thought he was a little bit too far out, but you can't argue with the results. Jarris calls for the trap, and it pays off as Johnson steals the ball. And Johnson will finish it. I think Utah State should take a timeout now because tomorrow's arguing about a walk. I don't know about that. It looked like a good one, two step to the basket to me. But Utah is in control now. Well, it's a seven point Utah lead. Roll, cutting through the lane and another turnover in your right flank. Aggies in danger of letting it get away yeah, from them. And it's coming off of the defense, believe it or not. I, uh, Utah has, has scored on some outside shots, but now with a tip in by Altoff and, and, of course, a slashing basket by Johnson. And now, you know, the, and Stu Moore calls the timeout. Some, right. some of a, a little bit of a force shot there, but it went in, and that's all that counts right now. And it may have come one play too late in that yeah. sequence. He probably could have taken it a few minutes early. Nevertheless, we have timeout, and the Utes have scored 20 to Utah State's 11. Here's the capper, Johnson with the steal. And Johnson will end up finishing the play as he goes to the basket with the scoop. Well, a good crossover going to the basket real hard. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you Santa Claus? I heard you might be him. If you are him, here's my list. Help the Marines make Christmas possible for less fortunate children. Donate a new toy to Toys for Tots. Just bring an unwrapped toy to the jazz game on December 8th or December 10th. The best thing about life is my freedom. I'd love to have the freedom to choose my own doctor. Without health, what else do you have? I worry about keeping my family safe and healthy. Control is very important. I want a doctor who knows what he's doing and who's able to communicate that. Somebody who goes along well with my personality, who knows me. Someone that can relate to me. What I want for my doctor is a clean bill of health. If you have a positive attitude, you always have fun. Be a leader, make your own decisions. I want to be the one calling the shot. Hey, it's my life. It's your life. It's your health. Take control. There's a lot more to working in AutoZone than looking up parts or ringing up sales. And it has to do with taking pride in taking care of customers. Like testing an old part before selling a new one. Or simply having what they need when they need it. In other words, it's about taking care of people who take care of cars. And that's what we do best at AutoZone. A 15-5 Utah run has staked them to a 20 to 11 lead. And Frank, Utah State in danger of, of violating one of the keys we talked about pregame, and that is the patience. They've lost some contact now. There's a little bit of separation between the Aggies and the Utes. Yeah, you got to give Utah credit. After the timeout, a couple of substitutions, they probably have a better team on the field on the court now than they had when the game started. And they've upped their defensive intensity and they're scoring off good defense. You know, it's an old uh, cliche by uh, Jerry Sloan that the defense will dictate how the offense plays, and that's exactly what happened here. Very hard to be patient and hold the basketball now when you're a four and a half baskets behind. Deion Bailey out of West Covina, California, checked in for the Aggies at the timeout. And Colbert is back in for Utah. And you strip the ball underneath. Yeah, you know, it, 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 while it's very hard to be patient, it's what you have to be. And there's another turnover without getting uh, a, a real good shot at the basket. And Jensen hits the hardwoods. And Cullen gets the rebound. And Utah commits the turnover as Cullen unable to control it. Yeah, but I like what Cullen did. He went after that loose ball. That was great. And a timeout taken again. Coaches don't like exactly what they see. Huge by nine.
years, we have crash-landed on the planet Satellandamak. Give me that. <gasps> Check it out. Right now, get McDonald's six-piece golden chicken McNuggets for just 99 cents. It's a Disney and Pixar Toy Story 2 celebration. Let's get going. Six-piece chicken McNuggets are just 99 cents, but you better hurry. Did somebody say McDonald's? Wait for me. Hey, Dad, what can I get for Grandma? Honey, you got me. Hey, Dad, what's up? Listen, does Grandma like cheese? I've never actually seen her eat cheese. Honey, pink or blue for your mom? I have never thought about that. And I have no idea what to get Grandpa. Hi, all. Need the perfect gift? This season, when you get the AT&T Family Plan or other AT&T wireless plans, you'll get a $30 rebate when you buy a Nokia 5160 with a Mickey Mouse color cover. The holidays are so stressful. So talk all you want. Your family. Utah with a nine-point lead and making it happen off the defensive end, Frank, as we see on the Larry H. Miller telestrate. Well, there's terrific pressure here. Look at these guys are facing out, looking in support defense. That, you'll see the uh, dribbler crossover, but look, at here comes Jensen out here for the double team, and that is pressure. And ever since they've had the timeout, that's the kind of pressure that Utah State has had to face. Now watch this. There's the double, all right? Now, of course, he's looking for support. There's the steal that comes off the pressure. Now it leads to Johnson going up the floor, and watch how he crosses over here, right in there, and takes it up to the hoop. A beautiful move as he kisses it off the glass. So that's making the defense get baskets for you, Steve. Thanks, Dave. And Johnson with his uh, two points. Illustrator brought to you by the Larry H. Miller Auto Group, where we're doing whatever it takes to provide an environment of total customer satisfaction. Back to action again. Aggies have been outscored 15 to 5. Looking for something inside, Jorson. This was letting him play a little bit too, Frank. Well, yeah, you know, I thought there was a little contact with the body there, but I thought otherwise it was pretty good defense. And, and you know, you wouldn't have said anything. I don't think uh, Utah would have had a squawk if they had gotten a basket out of it. I think that the referees should let play people play. Absolutely. That's a little bit of a rush shot. I'm sure that's not a shot that uh, yeah. Stu Morrow wants. Well knocked out of bounds off Utah. Utah State is hustling. Four and a half baskets. They're still very much uh, part of this game. But the last six minutes, Jeremy Utah Kelly has been uh, in total control. Harvey comes out, Killian comes back in. And the Aggies with not enough field goal attempts. They're 5 of 11. They're shooting 45.5% from the floor. Utah shooting 47. Yeah. But the Utes have 17 attempts, and Utah State only has 11. Yeah, I'd want to shoot 45% of 17, so 45% of 11. <laughs> Jorson, turn around, and it rims out. He can't buy a hoop. No, and he had a pretty good look then. I thought he waited a little bit too long, and I thought that Rawl uh, passed up a shot. He can't do that. This game being pay played at the pace that Utah would prefer rather than Utah State. And that's what they want right there. They want to get the ball inside. Now, it isn't important so much that Althoff got a basket there, but he makes an inside presence felt, and that will open up the outside later on, Steve. And that's what I think in some of the early games was missing with the Utes. There was no inside presence. Now, you can say that you don't have Metlar. That doesn't matter. You got somebody in there. Thomas, as a body hits the ground hard, it's Dion Bailey for Utah State. Went down hard in the paint. And he slowly gets up. Cullen in for Utah, along with Killian, Alex Jensen. Colbert and Big Nate Altoff. Now Utah's got to get something going. They've slowed down a little bit because there's a nice advance pass by Colbert up to Jensen while the uh, Utah State defense was not ready. Now you want to come out of this set with something here. You've gotten the ball back without a shot by Utah State. Make them pay for it. Colbert working a little one-on-one -on -one in the lane and a tip. I think it's going to be taken away. They call Cullen with the offensive foul, but that's a hustle play Rick Majerus will appreciate. Colbert, Colbert is very, working very hard to get an identity for himself, see? So he goes a little bit one-on-one, -on -one, and of course, Rick Majerus sits him down and gives him a, a little piece of his mind, a little coaching. All right, but that's good because that's how the youngster is going to learn. He can't do it by himself, but I also understand it. That's what he wants. And it is Sharp who comes in to replace him. Yeah, Sharp is, is not as good an athlete as Colbert, but he's got the experience. 
And you know, that's good refereeing. You know, one of the players down the end was acting up. So instead of calling the technical foul, you know, I think he was just coming out on the floor. I don't well, think it was anything serious. And the referee went over and told Rick. You know, and that's Scott Thornley, a veteran official yeah. who worked last year's national championship game. Right. One of the great guys in the game, as well as a great official. Yeah, he didn't make a big issue out. No, discretion. And that's something we don't yeah. see enough of. No. Daniels jump hook. Yes. He nice move by it. Daniels. I'll tell you one thing. I got some old suits so I can sell Daniels. Hey, Daniels, 6'6", 250. <laughs> That's a big body. Yes. Can you imagine I weighed 100 pounds more than that? Well, it's now been a long time, though, Paul. Yes. Well, here they are now in the in the zone. And uh, Utah's taking their time, moving the ball, making the zone work. It, it's, an, it's a semi-aggressive zone, Steve. It's, it's causing Utah to be a perimeter team, but they're making the shots. Killian again. He hasn't missed still tonight from three-point land. He is four of four with 12 on the board. Yeah, and you know what? The, the, the strategy's working. They're, they're making, after they score a field goal, they come back into a 1-2-2 two, two zone, and it is causing Utah to be a perimeter team. The only thing is they're making some tough shots. Thomas from the outside for two. No, yeah. tough. Now he slapped out of his hands and Colin yeah. gets it up. Thomas gets the same shot as Killian, but his doesn't go down. So now they're in man-to-man. Three, Cullen. Yes, he buries it again. And the Utes are shooting lights out from three-point land. They sure are. They're getting the shots and they're making them. The whistle stopping play. Utah is shooting 75% from beyond the arc. Well, you know, Steve, I even mentioned this to Coach Majerus uh, about a week ago, is that your team has to be careful. You've seen it happen with the Jazz, you've seen it happen with the Utes, that you become very comfortable with a perimeter game and eventually it kills you. Well, you got to be comfortable with those numbers. Jeremy Killian and Phil Cullen combining the three-point play as the Utes up 26-13. On Saturday, it snowed so much I built a snowman. But my mom and dad were worried, because our furnace broke. And then a nice man called Brian came in a big truck and gave us a new furnace, even though it was Saturday. And then nobody worried anymore, because the cold wasn't inside anymore. For a high-efficient furnace with clean-burning natural gas by design, call High Country HVAC in Centerville or CV Carlston Heating and Air Conditioning in Murray. Dodge Caravan is the most innovative, most imitated, most trusted, best-selling minivan ever. And now, the gold standard of minivans features this generous cash allowance. We've just made it easier to separate yourself from the crowd. Dodge Caravan. Different. America First Credit Union lets you choose the way you want to do business with them. Now, Roland? He insists on going to a branch even for the simplest things, like making a deposit or a money transfer. But since America First has better online financial services, I check my account balance, apply for loans, even pay all of my bills right from home. However you like to bank, America First makes it easy, even if computers make you feel like a fish out of water. Well, Utah has doubled the Aggie score since trailing 6-5. to five. They have outscored them by a uh, score. Well, Utah has scored 21 points since that juncture and just eight for Utah State. But this is the reason why. Utah on the outside. Killian is four for four from beyond the arc. And Utah shooting 75% on three-pointers. Replay being brought to you by Southwest Airlines with fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Next time you need to fly, fly Southwest Airlines. Defense and rebound on the part of the Utes. You know, maybe I'm looking at it more like a coach uh, than a fan, but I, I, I appreciate good shooting, and they're getting good shots, and they're making them. But I think they're scoring because they're, they're shutting uh, Utah State down. I, I don't know the last time that Utah State got one, got a basket. Well, the Aggies have struggled scoring points. We talked about that before this game started. As the whistle stops play again, it'll be a personal foul called.
believe it's going to be on Fusey. Fusey, who's just checked in, picks up his first personal foul. A reminder that tonight's University of Utah basketball game is being brought to you in part by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Well, you know how I feel, Steve. It's hard to do it, but when you get behind, especially on the road, you've got to turn into even a more patient team. Boy, what a left-handed chain shot that time. It didn't go down. But I'll tell you, you can't fault the effort on the on the uh, part of Troy Roll. He elevated with a right hand, kicked it to his left, and came just short off the front of the rim. And, you know, nothing wrong with the effort of uh, Dimitri Jorson there. You know, good second effort. Went up real strong after getting the offensive uh, rebound. And Altoff commits the personal foul. Nate with his first. Yeah, which uh, I'm glad Nate only has one foul at this juncture. That has been his nemesis, uh, as we know, that sometimes he gets in foul trouble. He gets anxious. He wants to block shots. He's a shot blocker. Sometimes he gets a little too anxious. This is the young man, Dimitri Jorsen from Belgium. 6'11", 242 pounder. Really the only size the Aggies have in terms of height. They've got a couple of 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, guys, but uh, they just don't have the size that Utah does. However, Utah State has been able to out-rebound all their opponents go on so far this year. Don't forget, they played Florida to a two-point game in the Maui Classic. They beat Chaminade, which is no easy feat on the islands, and then they came back and beat USC in the consolation game by two points. Well, you know, they've got a lot of athletes. If they don't have the real, real big guys. Uh, they do have in, in uh, Thorson, uh, Jorson, but... You know, uh, other than that, they, they, but they have pretty good overall size, and I like their bills. They're athletic. I think that Coach Morrow has got them in great physical shape. Look at this one more time. Ball on the floor. I don't think they have great team speed. Stu Morrow looking on. Good, solid, fundamental coach. A guy whose background began in Provo. He a, was a Utah County resident of course uh, made his coaching name really in the collegiate ranks at colorado state did a great job at colorado state and uh, you know and of course he knows uh, utah like the back of his hand because he's played against uh, rick majera so many times jensen pops from the outside another three pointer and a huge shot a living large beyond the arc you know what the big thing is? They're playing with great confidence. They are. Now, sooner or later, you figure those odds will catch up to you, but you ride the horse as long as it'll run. And right now, that three-point horse is running know. strong. If they give you open shots, you got to take them, I guess, and that's what they're doing. They're sacrificing. They're giving them permanent. And, of course, that's hurting them. Dribble violation on the Aggies. Hughes will take over. Five fourteen left in the first half. Utah with 29 points and the Aggies just 15. And there's one of the reasons, a 7-2 bulge for the turnovers for Utah State and Utah. Now they go back into man-to-man, -man, which they do on misses. And because if they scored more baskets, the zone would be more effective, but they can't get into it enough. Harvey raises. It won't drop. And the battle for the rebound is won by the Aggies. The Aggies do a pretty good job of getting the ball inside, but they just haven't had a lot of attempts. Johnson battling for the defensive rebound. Pass knocked down, and Harvey retrieves. Yeah, same plain pass. A lot of times those defensive men are just in there. They don't want to be there, but they're there. Most defensive players run back in the middle of the floor. By the way, on Wednesday's game, Mark was waiting for me to use the same plane pass. He said, I heard that from Frank a hundred times. How he was coaching me. As Harvey hits, he said, don't make the same plane pass. Yeah, and of course, uh, I thought that uh, Mark Eaton might have been as good an outlet passer as there's ever been in the NBA. But it's the truth. The game is played at triangles. And, you know, it isn't something I invented. Uh, it's something that I learned from great coaches that I had uh, the privilege of either working with or playing for. Well, he told me, he said, I'd have been a better passer if he'd have let me throw the same play. <laughs> he, he told me, he said, when you're 7'4", it negates the same plane rule. <laughs> Maybe he was right. He probably was. Killian for three, and he's still perfect. He is unconscious, and a timeout is taken on the floor. Utah has opened a 20-point margin on the Aggies with 341 left in the half on the strength of Jeremy Killian's three-point shooting. The Utes shooting 81.8% from beyond the arc. 
and 52% from the floor for the game. Harvey. He finds the range. It's contagious. And here's the man who started the bug, Jeremy Killian. And perhaps his name tonight should be killing him because that's what he's doing. Twenty-second timeout brought to us by Mount Olympus Spring Water, pure and natural, the first choice of Utahns since 1898. And the Aggies really, they led 6-5. They've scored just nine points since that timeout, which must seem like ages ago. And they've given up 30 yeah, points. Yeah, that'd be excellent. So they've given up 30 points in the same time frame, Frank, that they have scored nine. An unbelievable Utah run. Yeah, they're, they're shooting lights out. They're here at home. They feel good. The crowd is into the game. Uh, you can't fault, you know, you, everything else you can talk about execution, it always ends up, do you make shots? And of course, it's very hard now for, for Utah State to be as patient as they would like. So there's a nice move by uh, Jorson. Uh, I don't know why anybody would leave Belgium, by the way. I've been there. That is a beautiful, beautiful place. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, if you want to play in the NBA. Yes, you've you got to, yeah, and he looks like he has that, those kind of. Uh, uh, prospects. He's a junior. He's got a great build on. He's six foot eleven. But uh, yeah, I, I think what happens when you're shooting like this, it's very tough to. Uh, oh, and there's another one. Well, as badly as Utah played on Wednesday, and as the way things did not go their way in Ogden tonight, the basketball gods have even the playing surface. Well, you know, you build confidence. Uh, right now, they're they're playing with tremendous confidence in themselves. And of course, they can't let that happen. That guy got to the basket a little too easy, and you know Rick Majerus is going to be effing that. Not that that the initial man wasn't beaten off the dra uh, off the uh, dribble, uh, but where was the support? Killing it, still perfect. It doesn't matter where you put him; just get him in the building, and he'll make the shot. I haven't seen three-point shooting since we had Darrell Griffith here. There's good support defense there. Good help by Johnson. Over the top. Yeah, good Sarah. support defense from the beh people behind. Oh, he's human. He's uh, human. He gets the monkey off his back. Now he can loosen up and just play the game. Oh, and he set. He tried to set the uh, defense well, so he would draw the foul, and the guy lost the ball off his chest. And we'll take a timeout, but Jeremy Killian. Six of 70 on the arc, 18 first half points. He's almost outscored the Aggies single-handedly. Hey, Dad, what can I get for Grandma? Honey, you got me. Hey, Dad, what's up? Listen, does Grandma like cheese? I've never actually seen her eat cheese. Honey, pink or blue for your mom? I have never thought about that. And I have no idea what to get Grandpa. Hi, all. Need the perfect gift? This season, when you get the AT&T Family Plan or other AT&T wireless plans, you'll get a $30 rebate when you buy a Nokia 5160 with a Mickey Mouse color cover. The holidays are so stressful. So talk all you want. Your family. From the very beginning, he was so committed. He stuck with it. He never lost sight of his goal. The hard work and determination Philip 66 is proud to sponsor University of Utah basketball. We know performance starts with commitment. 41-19 Utah throughout the game. Our scoreboard update brought to you by Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield of Utah. Offering more strength, more choice, more control for you. And right now, you can't get more in control, Frank Layden, than Utah with Jeremy Killian and the rest of the squad shooting 11 for 14 beyond the arc, 78.6%, and Killian is 6 of 7 alone. They're getting the ball, they're facing the basket, which is, is, the, is the premise on offense that you, you always start with. Catch the ball, face the hoop. If you're free, shoot it. Now, it might go in. You know, you hope that it goes in uh, four out of ten times. Uh, but they are just getting wide open looks, and they're putting them down. And, of course, Killian, we talked about him, uh, his defensive uh, prowess before the game, but he's doing it offensively. Bailey to the basket, he's fouled. And, Frank, we always talk about three-point shooting. 
you take the percentage of three-point shooting and add a half again because you're getting half as many points again, three points instead of two, as we look at the replay here. Uh, it looked to me like Johnson had a pretty good block on it. But a foul called on Jeff Johnson. But Frank, if you take 78.6%, you add half again as much, so you're looking at another 38% uh, on top or 39% on top of that. You're over 100% if you equate that's it a, that's a, to exactly shooting two right. points. You're shooting 75%. You're actually uh, shooting perfectly. And uh, the only thing is, Steve, that you can't count on that. I, 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 I love to see them making the shots, but I think that you, you don't want to become a perimeter team. Uh, you know, tonight they're going down, uh, but if they're not going down, those are fast breaks for the opponents. Yeah. And nobody shoots over, uh, you know, 50% every single night from the three-point line. However, it's, it's winning this game, and that's what, what the priority is right now. Andre Mahorn, who has come in out of East Orange, New Jersey, a nephew of Rick Mahorn, the NBA player, has come in and commits a personal foul. And he's committed another one, so... Perhaps the, uh, well, I should leave it alone. I was going to say, maybe the lineage has something to do with that. Rick Mahorn, known as a fierce physical player in yes, the NBA. Yes, he is. He's an enforcer. And this young man, a little smaller, at 6'6", junior college transfer, Andre Mahorn. Picks up two quick foul, personal fouls. Yeah, bad, uh, Here's Mahorn. Goes to the basket. The foul won't go. And Jeff Johnson has it for the, uh, for the Utes. And here come the Utes. Aggies do a good job getting back, though. Yes, they do, and they're very aggressive here in the double team, and they make it pay off. Ball goes out of bounds off Adam Sharp. Now, that's the most uh, aggressive uh, defensive stance I've seen by, uh, uh, by Utah State so far, Steve. They got back quickly, and they got right after it. They went, they took the ball to the basket, but once again, Utah does an excellent job of cutting off the, uh, the slash into the basket. Pusey comes in to replace Nate Althoff. For Utah, 20-point margin. Uh, Aggies had good position. Mahorn couldn't oh, find the handle. Yeah, that was a tough pass. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. If fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. Pressure in backcourt. Rock flying it to Colbert, who beats it. Now Utah will set into the offense. Now they're showing good patience against the man-to-man. -man. Of course, Johnson gets an open shot. And this time it doesn't go down and things starting to even yeah, up a he, little bit. He, there was a little more pressure on him there, so he, he, he uh, went a little quicker than he probably liked. Bailey's shot won't go for yeah, three points. Now there's an open shot. Bailey doesn't make it. Killian makes that shot. That's the game of basketball, especially at the college level. Inside 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. And a 20-second timeout taken by Rick Majerus. He wants to talk things over on this last possession. Yeah, he wants to get a good shot here. You know, he knows that this is the last possession. He wants to make sure that Utah State doesn't come back and get a basket and have uh, any kind of momentum. And of course, he's going to have all three-point shooters in there. Yeah, you saw Killian checking in. 20-second timeout brought to us by Mount Olympus Springwater, pure and natural. The first choice of Utah since 1898. Frank, I'm surprised can't get any tonight in the Huntsman Center. We've been not well, drinking, we're, going, we're going to get some at halftime. We've yeah. been drinking uh, yeah. tap water. Yeah, well, so. everybody else is drinking it. That's why there's nothing left for us. They have to ship it in here. But, you know, it's interesting, Steve, that Rick Majerus right now, I can tell you, if you asked him what the score is, he'd say it was nothing, nothing. All right? He doesn't care. He doesn't He doesn't look at that scoreboard and say we're 20 points ahead. He, he always coaches like he's behind. You saw Killian shot. 28 of 47 yeah. three-pointers for the season. Now, the last inbound uh, pass was intercepted, so he wants to make sure that they get the ball inbounds here and that they get a nice shot. The shot clock is off. They can control the, the entire the rest of the time left in this half and end up with a decent shot. I'm sure he's going to start looking for something slashing to the basket where they might get to the foul line or something inside. Now, they don't have a real big man in there now, but there's a nice little play there. And, of course, the ball is taken away. But not a bad attempt. Not a bad attempt at all. Bailey has to throw up the last second shot off the glass and it won't go. But the first 20 minutes is in the books. Utah State about a point a minute. And Utah almost double that. 41-21 Utes at halftime.
Larry H. Miller invites you to celebrate the holidays with the 14th Annual Christmas Sing-Along Tuesday, December 14th at 7 at the Delta Center. Formerly held in the Salt Lake Tabernacle, the Christmas Sing-Along features generations of sound and distinguished conductor Robert C. Bowden. The event is free to everyone, so come enjoy the music. December 14th at 7 at the Delta Center. Does Jason Alexander want seven of nine for her mind? You are an ideal candidate. Or her body, Voyager. Wednesday at 8 on KJAZZ TV. Flying to L.A. for business? If these eight reasons don't convince you to fly Southwest Airlines to Los Angeles, maybe this will. Call 1-800-IFLY-SWA. You are now free to move about the country. From the very beginning, he was so committed. He stuck with it. He never lost sight of his goal. The hard work and determination paid off. Philip 66 is proud to sponsor University of Utah basketball. We know performance starts with commitment. Is coming, the goose is getting fat. This Christmas, make R.C. Willie the first stop to fill your holiday shopping list. You'll find Utah's absolute best values all in one place. A gift from R.C. Willie will become a treasure your family will cherish for years. May your holidays be grand. Nobody beats an R.C. Willie Christmas. Nobody. It's halftime at the Huntsman Center where Utah leads Utah State 41 to 21. Hello everyone, Chris Harris here in the KJAZZ studios. We'll send it back to the Huntsman Center in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look at some highlights between fifth ranked Michigan State and number four Kansas. The Spartans still without their injured all-American point guard, Mateen Cleaves, but they do have Charlie Bell. Bell coming up here on the break. He will get the lay-in, Michigan State up early. A little later, Bell, comes up with the dish to Andre Hudson. He gets it down for the flush. Spartans up 39-23 at the half. After intermission, the Jayhawks playing some D. Nick Bradford with the steal, gets it to Kenny Gregory for the jam. Kansas within 653-47. But in the end, too much Spartan power. Bell will miss the lay-in, but Hudson cleans up the mess, and Michigan State knocks off Kansas 66-54 the final. Well, on December 18th, Utah will take on Fresno State in the Las Vegas Bowl. And right now, I'm joined by Utah's first team Mountain West Conference linebacker, Kaltai Olaveo. Kaltai, welcome aboard. How you doing? Good. Good. How's practice been so far for you guys? It's been good. I mean, everyone's excited, especially with the win against BYU. Um, kind of made us, you know, eligible for this bowl game against in Vegas. And so everyone's excited, looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, uh, this is the first bowl game for Utah since 1996. Your first bowl game. How excited are the guys right now? I am, personally, I'm very excited. Um, my first bowl game, uh, I don't know what to expect, but uh, we've been practicing real hard and looking forward to, to going down there in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Now you guys play Fresno State, a team you guys beat last year, 24-16. This year, the Bulldogs are eight and four. Kowak champs with Hawaii. They're led by the quarterback, Billy Volek. He's thrown for 30 TD passes this season and only three interceptions. What do you have to do to contain this guy? Well, we just uh, need to do what we did on, all, all year with uh, our ends, John Frank and, uh, and uh, Andy Bowers, and containing this quarterback, making him stay in the pocket and not get out. Mm -hmm. Can you stick around here for a little bit? Okay. Well, we got to take a quick break, but first, if you're looking to go to the Las Vegas Bowl, there's still plenty of good seats available. Here's the number to call to get tickets and go bowling with the Utes. It's 581-UTIX. That's 581-8849. Give it a call, and we'll be right back. Grandma. Oh! Mm. Stevie. Over here. Oh. Grandma. Oh. How long has it been? 
You are now free to move about the country. Fresh, so fresh. Smith's Market fresh every day. The best holiday get-togethers begin with the best ingredients. Market fresh from Smith's. Veggie trays, deli platters, delicious ideas that make entertaining easy. Smith's Market fresh every day. When you've got the need for some serious air, Woo! Voice Stream gives you more. Best ever. 600 anytime weekday minutes. I know it's the best. Plus free weekends nationwide. Because I called everywhere. That's a huge hunk for just $39.99. I'm telling you, Bob, this is the best. So get a hunk of your own. On the other hand, maybe you should go to Maine. With Voice Stream. Guaranteed. Hello. Looking for a used car? You know who to see, because you know who has the biggest selection in town. And you know who has the best deal around. But what you don't know is that right now, when you buy any quality used car from You Know Who, you'll get free 200 Larry H. Miller Megabucks to spend at the Megaplex 17 movie theaters at Jordan Commons. That's $200 of mega entertainment free. But only with your purchase from any Larry H. Miller dealership. And only before December 31st. Larry H. Miller, after all, you know this guy. The Utah Utes are going to defeat the BYU Cougars here in Provo, 20 to 17. Cal Tai, nice to take a look at that again, isn't it? <laughs> it's good to look, you know, against BYU, a good team. Uh, you know, we had to, we went in, um, the underdogs, and we, we knew we had to win that game uh, to be eligible for a bowl game, and so everyone was excited, especially playing BYU down there at BYU at Cougar Stadium, and so everyone was pumped and ready for that game. Yeah. You still got a pretty big smile over there, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about this game coming up. It looks like a high-scoring affair on paper. You guys led the Conf Mountain West Conference in scoring 33 points a game. Fresno State led the WAC in scoring 33 points a game. Seems like a shootout on paper. Yeah, well, um, I guess it would come down to a game of defense, and uh, I guess as a defense, we need to um, just step up to the challenge. Uh, we've been uh, doing that this whole season with adversity and um, um, people doubting us and all that, and um, especially against BYU. And so we need to come up in this game and uh, you know just step up as a defense. Speaking of the defense, you're an all-conference uh, linebacker. Let's talk about John Frank, the Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year at defensive end. Touch on his play and what he's brought to you guys this season. Well, John Frank brings a lot of attention. Um, the offensive line uh, of the opposing team needs to, you know, they usually concentrate the blocking scheme on John Frank. And so it kind of frees up the linebackers a little bit to make plays. And, you know, John Frank is just an outstanding player. Uh, he brings a lot of, lot with him in his pass rush and his ability to, you know, get off blocks and stop the run. Yeah. Real quick, one tough loss for you guys. You will not have Stevon Smith, the wide receiver, return specialist. How is that going to affect you guys as well coming well, into this thing? Everyone knows Stevon's a playmaker. Uh, he just steps up, you know, when you least expect it. And so, the rest of those who back him up will have to step up in this game. Uh, Clifford Russell and uh, Boo Bendinger, all those guys will, will have to have a big game to, for us, in order for us to come out with first, yeah. Well, Kaltai, thanks for joining us, and, and good luck in that game. Thanks. Take care. Well, when we come back, Steve and Frank will have second half action from the Huntsman Center. The score over there right now at the half, Utah lit the weed over Utah State, 41-21. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. I love you more than I can say. I'll love you twice as much tomorrow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Love you more than I can when say. When it comes to subs, Blimpy founder Tony Conza has strong feelings. So. That's why, Tell unlike some please, other sub places, Blimpy know. uses choice meats, Do real dairy cheese, and fresh baked bread. I love you Tony Conza, a man say. who loves his subs. Blimpy, it's a beautiful thing. If we were selling a half a dozen different lines of cars, we'd expect to have a few shots taken at us. At Hinkley Dodge, we sell one thing and one thing only, Dodge. And we sell more quality Dodge vans, trucks, and automobiles than any other dealer in Utah. Nobody does Dodge like Hinkley does Dodge. What makes this kid so good? He's at Hinkley. Dodge is all they do. 
We're Hinkley Dodge. Dodge is all we do. Where are we? It appears we have crash landed on the planet Sata Lundamac. Give me that. <gasps> Check it out. Right now, get McDonald's six-piece golden chicken McNuggets for just 99 cents. It's a Disney and Pixar Toy Story 2 celebration. Let's get going. Six-piece chicken McNuggets are just 99 cents, but you better hurry. Did somebody say McDonald's? Wait for me. Its 1,500-acre campus sits at nearly 5,000 feet, one of the highest universities in America. Its medicine, genetics, and engineering programs are ranked among the highest in the nation. Its graduates have claimed the world's highest honors, including the Pulitzer, Tony, Emmy, and Academy Awards. So if you want a truly higher education, consider the University of Utah, now celebrating 150 years of bringing out the highest in all of us. Utah State has struggled offensively here in the first half, scoring just 21 points as Utah has blistered the Nets from outside and they lead 41 to 25. Welcome back to the John M. Huntsman Center. Frank, let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to us by Phillips 66, the performance company. And you see the numbers there as the Utes are shoot, shooting lights out. That 52% from the floor and 73% from beyond the arc. Well, yeah, and, and of course, the, there is one stat that jumps out is the fact that they haven't gotten to the free throw line. You know, first of all, I can't remember a college team or maybe any team shoot as well from outside as the Utes have shot in this game. But I also can't remember a team that scored 41 points or more and has not gotten to the free throw line. That is especially at home. I mean, you can't talk about uh, home cooking, but uh, the referees are allowed uh, allowed the players to play somewhat. Well, a Utes dropped in the polls after their loss last week. Let's take a look at the ESPN USA Today men's basketball poll brought to us by Hinkley Dodge, where Dodge is always sell. You see the Utes dropping to 25th in the country. Cincinnati, almost a unanimous pick at number one with 26 first place votes. Arizona, Stanford, Kansas, and Michigan State rounding out the top five. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the second half as we do just moments ago. Tonight, we're being, they're playing for the old Ophir bucket or at least a leg up on it. But speaking of legs, Ron McBride and his Utah football team presented with the beehive boot, symbol of football supremacy in the state of Utah. And we'll be back. Fly to Puerto Vallarta from $249.95 per person. Fun bases, fun bases, fun jet vacations. The swamps of Louisiana. There's only one reason why we would bring Honda ATVs to this kind of mud. <laughs> this kind of terrain. This kind of non-stop torture to see if they can get out. They're America's most popular ATVs for America's least popular places. Plaza well, Cycle, where you have a choice. Our health is really our wealth. At my age, there are no bad days if you're here to see them. In Health Plan, we look for a choice of providers. I want health insurance we can depend on. I want to choose my own doctor. If it wasn't for a couple of good doctors, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. He may even come out the house to see you, the kind of doctor we're looking for. You've got to work hard all your life to make every minute count. You wanted something good looking, so you put me in front of some flowers. It's your life. It's your health. Take control. Fresh. So fresh, Smith's Market Fresh every day. Holiday baking begins with the finest ingredients, Market Fresh from Smith's. But the real joy is in the doing, using family recipes, sharing a holiday tradition. Smith's Market Fresh every day. This University of Utah sports presentation is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always part of the game, always Coca-Cola. McDonald's. Did somebody say McDonald's? And by R.C. Willie. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody.
It's been all Utah here in the first half of the Huntsman Center, but let's go back to last November 18th of 1998 when these two teams met. Utah at Utah State. Alex Jensen three would give Utah a lead at 54-52 with 244 left in the game. But Tony Brown, the young man out of Mountain Crest High School, answers with a three, and Utah State knocked off then number nine Utah, 62 to 54. But it would be the only loss of the five in-state games the Utes played. They would win the old Ochre Bucket with a uh, four and one record. So a single loss, a la Utah last week against Weber, does not automatically knock you out of the Ochre Bucket chase. But there's a look at the matchup we talked to you about before the game. Roll, Troy Roll of USU and Jeremy Killian. And you see Killian at six or seven from the three-point range has 18 points. Roll with the rebounding edge, but the Utes certainly with a scoreboard edge, Frank. Well, I think the the fact that they're missing shots has given them more opportunity to, to get to the boards. See what happens here in the second half. Start of the second half brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. It's all within your reach. Yeah, at I, I think it's interesting what's happening here is that you see uh, Harvey uh, back in the lineup, and I think he's the guy that's destined to play most of the time at the point guard or the off-guard position, uh, especially when... Uh, uh, you know, we see, uh, you know, Matala return to the lineup. Uh, Killian will probably be the off guard, and you'll have a lot of firepower out there. Well, the Aggies need to find some firepower here in the second half, but that has been the problem with them as Jensen misses from three-point land. Ball knocked out of bounds and retained by Utah. Yeah, I think a good, good effort there. Harvey kept after the ball, and though he didn't come up with it, he caused it to at least go off a uh, Utah State player. And of course, this is an important stance. You know, I, I know uh, uh, Stu Morrow has said to his team, "Look, we we have an injury out on the floor." Yeah, watch it. We'll see what happened again. It's Nate yeah. Althoff. Nate Althoff. Oh, it looks like two heads hit there. Do you see it? And he goes down. Yeah. Of course, Althoff's had the back problems, but yes. it, it is definitely his head. Yeah, he took one on the side of the head, and that's a, that's a soft uh, uh, spot. And, uh, and, uh, you might, you might want to rephrase that because no, 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 right on the side the of the temple. He got hit on the temple. It's a little <laughs> bit soft there, and of course uh, he goes off a little bit dizzy. You could see when he got up, he didn't quite have his feet under him. But that is a, you know, a terrible feeling, a sickening feeling when you get hit there. And he looks like he's doing all right. We'll get medical attention. Meantime, we're back to action again. Oh. Harvey, uh, excuse me, Colbert will trigger it. Yeah, it looks like they're looking at his wrist also. Maybe, maybe there's something there. Of course, Cohen comes in for him, so he got another good score. Good judgment by Killian. Oh, oh nice great pass. What a great one, too. Oh, that, that, that's the great, greatest pass I've seen Harvey throw. That was just, he could have taken a jump shot then and let Jensen get the rebound, but he spotted him inside and threw a perfect pass to him. Jensen made a nice catch and put it up softly. That was, uh, to me, a very, very mature Harvey there. Shot won't go down. Jensen has the rebound, and Utah will look to push the ball. Yeah, you know what? They run an opportunity, but they're very, uh, they're very good at the end. If they don't have a shot, they bring the ball back out, and that's hard to get a college team to do. It's hard to get any team to do. That's good discipline. Good ball movement now around the perimeter. Well, they really don't have a post-up player in the game now, so you can't say why aren't they getting it inside. But I think Jensen can can post up a little more than he has been uh, in this ball game. He's a good he's a good post up. He's a good scorer from down the post. -up. Brown with the bounce pass. It's errant underneath, and Utah will pick it up. Too much for Cullen, so teams exchanging turnovers yeah, as Nate Altoff comes yeah, back in and Cullen takes a seat. I like to see Culver take a take a shot, though. I mean, it was a tough pass, but at least it was an aggressive pass. There was the pass a moment ago from Harvey to Jensen inside on our Southwest replay. Just a great two-man game as all eyes went back to the top of the key, and Harvey comes over and kind of shaking up a little bit as well. Yeah, I think he got hit between the eyes. And that will do it. He's, he's teared up a little bit. Jorson kicks it back out to Brown. Nice feet underneath and a good finish on the part of the Aggies. Yeah, that was a good pass. And uh, 
You know, of course, there's nothing that they could do. If you can get the ball into that area, you're going to come up with either a foul or, a, or certainly a basket. And, of course, there's the press on again, which is effective, but you've got to score baskets in order to do it. Well, they get the ball in the hands of 6'11", Altoff, and he wasn't prone to put it on the floor, even though he had nobody in front of him. Fast knocked out of bounds. People might wonder why, you know, teams don't play more zone against the Utes, because the Utes play very good defense. You miss a shot, and it's tough for a zone to get back. They're very, all zones are vulnerable to a fast break, and, and the Utes will take the, take advantage of that. Well, Jensen's adjustment doesn't go down, and Altoff strong on the putback. He's fouled underneath. A reminder, tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Smith's Food and Drug Center. Market fresh every day, Smith's. Jorson picks up personal foul number yeah, it, look, it looks like Jensen goes up expecting to get hit, and he puts the ball a little bit high off the glass. And, of course, I like Altaf. He gets right back after it. Not only gets the rebound, but takes it right back up. Big Nate, a 53% free throw Now, shoot. this is the first uh, free throw, isn't it? I believe it is, Frank. Yep. So one thing you can look at, they're shooting 100%. And they're still shooting 100%, two for two. You'll always, if you get on those offensive boards, you'll always come up with something, either a, a, a foul or you'll get some foul shots or you'll get an easy basket, and maybe both. Incidentally, both teams perfect at the line. The Aggies are four for four. Alex Jensen with a personal foul. On the other end, first number one on Alex, and it's the first Utah team foul. There's another Rick Majerus. Brown on the inbounds pass. Forces up a shot and uses the glass. Young man out of Hiram with the basket. Yeah, I remember he had a good game last year, Steve. He really did. That. Yep. Well, he's got nine points tonight. Yes, he is a good player. Got a nice touch. He struggled a little bit with shooting this year, but he's starting to gain his form. And, well, you know what? Sometimes you'll miss one that you should make, and you'll, you'll, you'll make one that you shouldn't make, just like that last one. I'm sure he didn't call glass. Jensen and Rock, a mismatch there. 5-10 Rock uh, against 6-7 Jensen. Jensen tries to post him. Yeah, Jensen realized that, but uh, the rest of his teammates didn't see it. It's interesting that that's the first time that the uh, Utah State has gone back on defense after a field goal without playing zone. The other thing, Frank, is that the shot clock is almost gone when Killian launched an errant three. So the Utah State defense well, more yeah, effective in yeah, that they, And they didn't read that Jensen had a little guy on him. You know, Jensen had waved sharp through. He knew he had Sharp's man guarding him, and he went right inside with him. And we had just talked a little bit a while ago at how good uh, uh, Jensen is down on the box, especially with a little guy on him. But they didn't read it. They didn't see it. And as it, it ended up in a uh, permanent shot instead of getting the ball into Jensen with a little man on him, a mismatch. You saw the shooter's touch on the replay a minute ago of Tony Brown using the soft kiss off the glass. I don't think there's anybody in the business better than Tim Duncan of the San Antonio Spurs who used glass all through his college career. But it is extremely tough to get that soft kiss when you're under pressure. Yes, it is. Usually you use it when you're open or you you got a good angle uh, down inside 15 feet. But to use it when you're on the run, it's, uh, it's difficult. You know who was a great uh, coach of, of using the glass was Red Auerbach. The Celtics were always great uh, guys at banking shots. And I asked uh, Casey Jones about it one time, and he said Red believed in it, and they practiced it a lot. The clock's broken. The, the shot it is. Clock. The shot clock has now been set to 19. Just a reminder, our next television game, Oregon State Beavers at Utah, December 28th, 7 o'clock. We'll be right here in the Huntsman Center. Meantime, they've got the shot clock problem. No, it's not moving. So they reset it to 19, and it's stuck at 19. And Scott Thornley notices it, goes back over. And the young man there uh, with the white beard, prematurely balding and graying, because he's been a sports information director for some 25 years, is Bruce Woodbury. And now they're probably going to hand keep it and maybe announce 10 seconds from the public address announcer, I would imagine. Both coaches being informed as to what the protocol will be. While the uh, maintenance crew here tries to get something going, and it looks like timeout has been taken. As you see, the clock stuck at 19 seconds. And they will work on it, I assume, during this timeout. But it has been Utah since the early going. With five minutes gone in this game, Utah trailed six to five. Since that time, they've scored uh, 40 points. 
And now they're winding the game clock down to 15.58. Shot clock has gone down to 15, and they have called a timeout on the floor. As you look at Bruce Woodbury, who's now vice president for community relations here at the University of Utah, having turned over the sports information range to Liz Abel. We'll take a break. We'll be back from the John M. Huntsman Center, where Utah leads Utah State by 20. Grandma. Oh! Mm. Stevie. Over here. Oh. Grandma. Oh. How long has it been? You are now free to move about the country. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Come on. Drop the chalupa. Drop it. Drop the chalupa. Yeah. Drop the chalupa. The new Taco Bell chalupa is so good, people won't put it down. With a shell so crispy and flaky on the outside, yet soft and chewy on the inside, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Grab one now for just 99 cents. Oh. Move, move. Mine. They're back. Happy New Year, amigos. Four new chihuahuas are ready to party. Get yours now at Taco Bell. Well, they have run the shot clock down to 13 and reset the game clock at 16.02. But the only important numbers, as far as Ute and Aggie fans are concerned, is that 20-point discrepancy on the scoreboard. A reminder, our next Utah Jazz telecast will be coming away right here on KJS TV on the 15th of December. Note the start time, a 5 p.m. start, as the Jazz will be in Boston, the new Fleet Center. I guess not new anymore, but it's certainly newer than the old garden. They changed they, the old floor. They did. They brought the old floor over from the old garden, but they found out that it was just too oh. old to be a Believe it or not, you I know, played on that you floor. You know, that was a miserable floor. Yes, it there was. There were more dead spots on, mm -hmm. on that floor than an Al yeah, Gore speech. They, I mean, it was unbelievable. You can carry enough uh, tradition, but believe it or not, I played on that floor back in 1952-53. A look at the second half field goals only. Neither team really chewing things up. Jensen goes to the basket and he'll prove on the youth field goal total out to a six. And Alex Jensen saw the lane, exploited it, and has 12. And took advantage of the glass. An old fashioned lane. 47 25. Utah in firm control. Do you like Harvey's out there playing very tough on roll? And that's where one of his strong suits, I think, is that he can be a very, very good defensive player. The roll has been held to just two points. Yeah. Back. And he got those in the first shot he took. 11 turnovers on the Aggies now to just six for Utah. Can't afford to give the ball away. And there's Jensen uh, posting up here playing inside. And, and there it is. And that's what happens. You know, you start to establish yourself an inside game. And I'm sure that, uh, that Rick Majerus addressed that at halftime. He said, we're winning because we're making all those outside shots, but you're not going to do that against great teams. This is yeah, Jensen a moment ago. Beautiful. He lays it high off the glass, lays it down, palm up, just like he's putting a pie up on the top shelf. And Althoff, who is the only Ute to go to the line, is still perfect and keeps his team that way. As we see a couple of changes in the Aggie lineup, Dan Stewart. What I like about Althoff, Steve, is that he's worked at his game. He's worked at his body. He's really built himself up, all right, his endurance. People say, last year say about his hands. I think he's got good hands. And, and the thing is that he's really become a student of the game, and this is part of the game that he has worked on his foul shooting. But Frank, he's got those long arms. Yes, you know, he that does. That scouts look for. And up on the top of those arms is big muscles. And they look for that, too, on wide shoulders. But you know what? The thing you can't always teach is intelligence, and that's what he's got. I think he's a very intelligent young man. Well, he, he held control then. I thought that that was a foul on the offensive guy. You know, a lot of times he leaves his feet. He's not doing that anymore. And he's pulled to the ground by Brennan Ray, the man who I think thought he was fouled a moment ago and uh, got a little a little payback in that time. Not too malicious, but I think he felt like he was You know, it's interesting. As, as Altoff was falling, he stayed after the ball. He got a piece of it. Watch this now. All right, there's the shot. Watch, he goes up. And watch as he's falling. He gets another piece of the ball, all right? And you saw Ray wrapping the, his right arm against Altoff's left. Now this extended yeah, defense yes, now they are. is stepped up. Yeah, it's not three-quarter court anymore. It's full court. Stewart could have stole that one if he had just been a little more aggressive. And, of course, there's the perfect ball. Punctuation point 
You live by the press, sometimes you die by it, and that time Harvey snuck behind the defense to throw it down. This crowd rose as one on that slam dunk by Tony Harvey. Yeah, I know that uh, one of the things that the Utes have done in this game is they've done an excellent job of that. Rebounding, picking up loose balls, and playing good defense. Now, you're going to make shots. Some nights you're not going to make shots. The one consistent thing about basketball is good defense. You said before the game, you know, that Utah State is, is, is Stu Morrow is known for, you know, tenacious defense. Well, that's something that's a constant. You never have an off night defensively. You may have them in shooting, but the Utes have done an excellent job tonight defensively. There's a good defensive play by Stewart who stepped in front yeah. and knocked the pass away. You know what? Uh, Harvey should have changed the angle and then thrown the bounce pass. In there. He tried to, to throw from the top of the circle. And over, over and in. Colbert with a block on Rock. Colbert's a good athlete. He just, he's missed the Europe basketball, and he hasn't really made it up yet. But when he does, yeah, see that? Sharp changed the angle, all right? Now he gets it inside. That is excellent uh, basketball by Sharp. Altoff has it stolen. Yeah, when you throw a bounce pass in the paint, it better be perfect because there's too many bodies in there. Harvey wasn't set, hooked him with the hip. It's called oh, with the blocking foul. Lineup changes, Cullen. Killian Jensen into the Utah lineup. Daniels into the Utah State lineup. It may be generosity and, uh, and unselfishness to throw uh, passes when you're inside the paint, but Steve, you've got to be very careful in there because you're, you're, you're narrowing the court down to its smallest dimensions, and all the defensive people are in there, and most of the time they have just as much a right to the basketball as the offense. When you're down in there, jump up and shoot. Harvey. And his shot is awry as his shooting touch has gone cold again. Beg your pardon, Brown, four of nine. Yeah, Brown. Four of nine. Yeah, he's, uh, I think he's a good shooter because he's getting the ball up on top. It's just not going down for him. One thing I like about Jensen is so unselfish. He just plays with himself. He's not looking to score all the time. He does Jensen, that. He goes for the boards. He did. He committed the foul that time going for the board, but... Johnson found a lane. Jensen follows it. You know, Jensen, I always look at him. He looks like one of those guys that used to play for me at Niagara. You know, I know he's Swedish or Norwegian or something, and he's a Mormon kid, and he just got back from his mission. But he looks like a kid that I had by the name of O'Malley once. He was just a rugged, tough guy. Played with his shirt out, his pants down, his socks up, you know, and just kills everybody, doesn't he? I mean, he looks like he could play for Niagara. I'm not sure about the pants down part, though. Well, look at his pants. He's got down. the long ones there. Yeah, yeah, he just, you know, he's a, he's a play. He gives everything he's got. Which were the deflections. Scotty Layton thinks he's going to be a pro, and I think he is, too. I think he's, he's, he's the kind of guy that comes in, he's going to give you everything. He's going to give you a little bit of everything. He can shoot it outside. He's got leadership qualities. He's the tough size, though, Frank, isn't he? Yes, he seven? is. Yeah, but you know what? You know, he, I think he's a learner, so maybe he'll he'll play down. That's what a lot of these mid-sized guys can't do. They try to play to be bigger instead of trying to play to be smaller. Thomas is three. Now, he could maybe go in the pros and be an off-guard. That ends an Aggie scoring drought for uh, several minutes. A reminder, tonight's game is being brought to you in part by AAA of Utah. See how he handles the ball there. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, uh, outside shot oh, yeah. again by Killian, though. Jensen advanced the ball, got it up into the corner, and, and uh, of course, I got excited and, and got in on the guys that are paying the bills. That's all right. The AAA guys know. The AAA that guys are, no, I'm a member. And they know, they, they know good basketball when they see it. Yeah. They're fans, too. Short off the glass, the rebound. Still short off the glass. And Utah comes down with it. Yeah, Utah State played a little bit then like they were intimidated. They, they had some good stuff inside. It looked like they're so worried they're going to have their shot blocked. See, Jensen plays out here. That's why I think that maybe he can play an off-guard position in the pros. Then he gives you two spots. But like I say, a lot of those guys come in, they try to play bigger than they are, and you can't do that. Try to increase your skills to play uh, at a little a position. Sharp goes to the basket, has a lane, and it hangs on the roof ball. Sharp's a smart player, because he's got the right name for it. I think he went out to high school. It's a very good high school, right? It's a very good academic high school. But I like the way he went in there. He saw his opening, took it, and he doesn't make many mistakes. He doesn't hurt his team. 
just a, a note, we have not seen Trent Whiting tonight for Utah. The talk was that he may take a medical redshirt year. He's had some problems with the bones in his legs. It's been a chronic problem, not just surfacing this year. Been some thought as to redshirting him. He, I understand, gets to play one more game and can still have a medical redshirt. So perhaps the Washington State game may be his last of the season, if indeed that's the election. I think Rick Majerus would like him to, to medically redshirt. Uh, but the young man doesn't want to quit playing. And when you shoot the ball the way he does, uh, you I can't wonder why. Cusey yeah. comes in. Daniels misses at the line for Utah State. And Jensen gets a rousing hand from this crowd. Jensen has 12 points, Frank. He has also has seven assists to go with those 12 points. I think it would be in his best interest to get himself completely healthy, come back for a junior and see me. Uh, is a great shooter. All right, as we go to break, once again, a look at Adam Sharp who finds a lane. He doesn't need much room. Driving through traffic, laying it up and in. Utah 55, Utah State 29. Flying to L.A. for business? If these eight reasons don't convince you to fly Southwest Airlines to Los Angeles, maybe this will. Call 1-800-IFLY-SWA. You are now free to move about the country. Fresh, so fresh. Smith's. Market fresh every day. The best holiday get-togethers begin with the best ingredients. Market fresh from Smith's. Veggie trays, deli platters, delicious ideas that make entertaining easy. Smith's. Market fresh every day. Smith's. Looking for a used car? You know who to see because you know who has the biggest selection in town and you know who has the best deal around. But what you don't know is that right now when you buy any quality used car from you know who, you'll get free 200 Larry H. Miller Megabucks to spend at the Megaplex 17 movie theaters at Jordan Commons. That's $200 of mega entertainment free, but only with your purchase from any Larry H. Miller dealership and only before December 31st. Larry H. Miller, after all, you know this guy. 55-29, Utah over Utah State as we approach the three quarter mark, 10-41 left in the game, Frank. Well, you know what we're going to see here is a, is a full court zone press, and you're going to see the Utah team take it apart. They get the ball into the middle here, all right? They have an option to pass here. They have an option to pass here. All right, they make the pass opposite. The cross court pass there, and they take it in, and they lay it. The secret to beating uh, any kind of press is to get the ball into the middle, Steve, and then to be able to pass it to either side, all right? And that, of course, forms the famous triangles that we always talk about. Telestrator brought to us by the Larry H. Miller Auto Group where we're doing whatever it takes to provide an atmosphere of total. Here, here's satisfied. the press again. Now watch, somebody on the Utes will, will get into the middle. All right, now it turns out that it is Cullen. Now if the ball gets there, he has two options, all right? Sharp decides to keep it, the ball's reversed, and they do an excellent job of breaking that press down. A lot of energy pressing. And you take it out of their legs by handling the basketball well. You don't want to turn it over here, and you don't want to take a bad shot. Well, almost turned over. Yeah. We're seeing Curtis Bob for the first time tonight. Uh, he's had uh, just a few minutes of play. A young man out of Aurora, Colorado. Junior college transfer, 6'6". As the outside shot won't fall for Cullen. Well, you know, Johnny Wooden said that, you know, he always uh, full court pressed and, and he said, you know, I want to press. I don't care when the turnover comes. It may come in the form of a bad shot. It may come in a, in a mishandling of the ball. You've got to be as patient defensively as you are offensively. But I think uh, Rick Majerus loves this because he gets his team a chance to practice against the press in game conditions which should help him when he goes into conference play. 12-8, the turnover margin. Utah on the good end of that one. Yeah, I, I like what I've seen of Sharp uh, against this press. I think he's done an excellent job. Bad pass by Cone. Uh, you know, when you throw that basketball into the hole and the guy's being fronted, you got to throw it at, up at the backboard, almost as if it's a shot. 
because there's an errant shot. Yeah, the errant shot by Bob, and that steal on the defensive play was by Sean Daniels on the other end for Utah State, who's got the uh, Charles Barkley look-alike body from when Charles was in college. Well, there's one that Bob will not miss. Yeah, well, the shot made a mistake then. You know what he did? He became mechanical. You've always got to do just like shooting, a turn and face and see, and see who you're going to pass to. Don't get mechanical and just throw the ball from side to side. The defense may just be right in there waiting for it. Killian Elaine. Killian crashes into Bailey, who was moving. I tell you, when uh, Coach McBride was here getting the award, he could take a look at that build on Killian. He looks like he could play some football. Jeremy Killian, powerful legs, big upper body. Yeah, it looks like defensive back material at 5'11", 190. That's how you're Jeremy built, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's how you used to be built. Well, the 190 part might be close, just not 5'11". He's got a nice build on him. kidding me? He's got bigger calves than I've got uh, thighs. That's the first free throw missed, I believe. It is. You know what the thing is about him is that he is, whenever players do lifting, you see that uh, the, certainly the, uh, what would you say, uh, the, the, the molding of their muscles, the, you know, uh, I was going to say definition, different. definition, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, one of the things that about weightlifting and about weight training is it builds up confidence and endurance. And uh, you know that he has both. Well, Killian hits one of two. Colbert comes in and, and Harvey. Colbert and Harvey are the guards for Utah. Pusey and Johnson, the forwards. And in the middle is Cullen. Yeah. Colbert needs playing experience. He needs playing time. He gets beat there a little bit off the dribble. He runs into a, uh, a post. Cullen with a rebound. Yeah, and, and Cullen needs that. He needs, he needs his upper body uh, built up somewhat because he could be a very, very good player. Of course, he's probably a little bit loath to lift weights as a baseball pitcher. They like that long, lean muscle look instead of the instead of the bulk. Yeah, it's I guess so. with about a 90 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, well, I think one of the things you want to do is if you're a pitcher is build up your legs. Oh, nice little reverse finger roll by Jeff Johnson. Yeah, Jeff Johnson made a fine move there. He had a, he, actually, his body was underneath the backboard, but he reached out and used the board. Nice touch. You guys, get your hands up. Get your hands up. Use your hands. I, I like the way the Utes help out on defense. Daniels inside. It won't fall. It was out of bounds. Off Utah. It's funny when you help out and you give defensive help from the back. You give it, you get yourself good rebounding position, and that's what I think the Utes do. You know, it's it's not just uh, helping out uh, somebody driving to the basket, but when a shot does go up, you know, you're between your man and the basket. That was, uh, of course, Jerry Sloan's famous philosophy: is get between your man and the basket. Brown shot won't go down. You saw the graphic a moment ago. The most points that Utah State has allowed this year is 64 in their loss against Northern Arizona. With seven, uh, almost eight minutes remaining, Utah has 58, so almost certainly that uh, record will go by the board. Well, tonight. you know, the way the Utes shot in the first half, I thought they'd have m many more points than this. I mean, they couldn't miss. But you know it, Steve, we've been long together long enough to know the percentages always catch up. Yeah, their three-point percentage that was over 70 is now at 65, which it's is still, still pretty still very high, yeah. It's still pretty, you yeah. know, you well, settle yeah. for an only 65. Well, you hope that they uh, don't change in the next game. Here's it. Alertly picking up the air ball and putting it back. Yeah, in. And, that, and that is exactly right. People say, is he lucky? No, he's alert. And, uh, and uh, it isn't luck. It's, it's, uh, it's instinct. He grabbed that basketball out of the air, which is difficult to do, and converts it. Now, his little double team tried to get the ball out of Rolls' hands, which uh, I'm sure is one of their goals. Three pointer right Thomas, way off the mark. Gets six points if he makes that shot. Utah gets the basketball as there's a timeout taken on the court. When we return, Bernard Rock will check into the Utah State lineup. Meantime, 6.54 left, Utah 60, Utah State 31, as Johnson with the finger roll converts two for the Utes. We'll be back. Tuesday, UPN brings you the biggest fight of the century. And if you're serious, you gotta train eight hours a day. You're punching, you're running, you're lifting. What about drinking and whoring? No drinking, no whoring. Vern Troyer guest stars. Yo, Adrian! On an all-new Shasta McNasty. Ah, sweet! Then, prepare yourself. Uh-oh. For an all-new Dilbert. Fire in the hole! And on the strip. Damn. Finding a girl is easy. Keeping her alive isn't. Tonight, after the Utah game on KJAZZ-TV. 
your travel online with Southwest Airlines. And you'll automatically get double Rapid Rewards flight credits, which means four round trips get you a free ticket. And some downtime for your computer. Drive happy with our friends at Alamo Rent-A-Car and start earning free travel even faster. You are now free to move about the country. Hey, Dad, what can I get for Grandma? Honey, you got me. Hey, Dad, what's up? Listen, does Grandma like cheese? I've never actually seen her eat cheese. Honey, pink or blue for your mom? I have never thought about that. And I have no idea what to get Grandpa. Hi, all. Need the perfect gift? This season, when you get the AT&T Family Plan or other AT&T wireless plans, you'll get a $30 rebate when you buy a Nokia 5160 with a Mickey Mouse color cover. The holidays are so stressful. So talk all you want. Your family. Utah with a commanding lead. Bench play has been very important in Utah State's success this year as they've posted a record of 4-2. and two. When their bench outscores the opposition, they're 3-0. and oh. Now, the bench for Utah State accounts for 40% of the minutes, 33% of the points, and 41% of the rebounds. And Stu Morrill has played at least 10 players in every game. Tonight, the bench has gotten 7 points, but Utah's bench has gotten 19. So that 3-0 and all mark probably will stay intact. They're not going to win tonight in all probability, and their bench is going to be outscored. So 19-7, to seven, the, the bench edge right now in favor of Utah. But the Aggie bench is crucial, Frank, and they've played 11 players tonight. So they've played 10 in every other game, at least 10, and they've gone 11 deep tonight. Yeah, you know, a lot of times the bench will do well on, a, uh, on the road, you know, because they have a chance to sit there and, and get loose. And, of course, the opening minutes sometimes are oh. I'll tell you what, then. Boozy went to the basket that time. Yeah, he that wanted a, it. Yes, that was an excellent tip in. Pretty good shot, and he went up. But a lot of times the bench sits on the waiting, and of course they play against the other team's second uh, unit also. Uh, you know, I, I think that one of the things that the Jazz are going to go for, I think it's their bench is going to have to improve and be more productive. Nearly stolen by Johnson, but recovered by Roll, and now the lean-in shot. Is no good, and there's a lot of contact between Andre Mahorn and the youth player, and it is an offensive foul on Mahorn. And, and I'll tell you one thing: tonight's deal was very interesting. Well, there's there's great defensive position. Hughes, he just held his ground. Mahorn uh, uh, leaned in, especially instead of going straight up. But uh, you know, I I'm not sure that the youths even started their best team tonight. Uh, I, I think that you're gonna you're gonna have to see Tony Harvey play a, uh, a lot more, and uh, you know, he, of course, he is getting those minutes here in the second half. Also, the return of Hanno Metala expected towards the end of the month, maybe just after the holiday. Oh, a great handoff. Too bad that shot wasn't made. Yeah, Jensen just a little bit, uh, Johnson rather overextended yeah. as he received it, didn't have enough strength to flip it with the wrist. Roll outside. Well, that was a great exchange. The ball went inside quickly out to roll and hit that left-handed jumper. He saw the stroke there that has uh, him shooting over 50% from behind the three-point line. A lot of times what happens, Steve, is, you know, the, 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 the great players on the other teams in the state come here to Utah and play against the Rick Majerus team, and it, there's a lot of pressure on them. Three-pointer by Johnson. Well, Johnson came off the pick very nicely. They caught the ball squared up and put it down. And he is really starting to find this game, I believe. Well, and his brother Britton do back off an LDS mission as well. And these two guys play together. Yes. That will be some front be, line. Yes, and there'll be a lot of fun. I think it must be great for brothers to play together like that. Daniels shot will go, and Colbert comes out with a loose ball for and, Utah. And they're both great kids, too. Good students. They really are. Yep. And then out of Murray as Cullen holds the basketball. Looks for Harvey. Yeah, what a the good basket. change that was. Wow. And Harvey did a nice job of getting the shot up so that he could be fouled in the act of shooting. Uh, Knew he was going to take the contact, took the bump, and managed to get the ball up on top and give it a chance. That's an excellent move. An excellent move by Tony Harvey. He came off the pick set by Johnson that they switched, and when they did, he cut to the basket. Wow, that was good basketball. And Frank, Tony Harvey, Harvey is a 92% free throw shooter. First opportunity at the line tonight. Oh, those mechanics are excellent. You know. Yeah, he uses mostly arms and wrists. You watch, he's yeah. a guy who's got enough strength. He doesn't need a lot of leg. Yeah, but watch him. He'll go down, see, so he bends his knees, gets in the sitting position, and just goes up. Up nice. on the toes. Yep. Got a lot of confidence in his free throw. Doesn't take a lot of time. 
just the results. He put those two right in the middle. That's the way you used to shoot. I heard. <laughs> you were a great foul shooter, Steve. I heard you couldn't get to the foul line. Yeah, well, it was too far away for me. Now, I saw you play. You were a pretty good player. Scoop shot by Rock underneath. And again, the little guy on the floor is finding a way to get to the basket. Yeah, and, and you don't want to. That's a couple of times today in which, though, that's a good pick outside. I'll tell you, Pusey did a good job. That's, and Rock comes up. Yeah, that's three things that Pusey has done today. Of course, that pick there. And we'll look at that again. Turned a 5 4 situation, and of course, Johnson got free in the corner. But uh, yeah, that was a great pick. You will see that uh, in a few moments. He wasn't yeah. afraid to use his body. <laughs> well, and, and Rock at 5'10", 165 pounds, and that's soaking wet. Well, I thought Rock took it well. He you did. Know, he didn't get up mad or anything. He just got back on defense. <laughs> Rebound, Cullen and oh, two youths. Cullen and Cole were fighting for it. And a timeout has been taken on the floor. 337 left in the game, and it is all Utah as they lead 70 to 36. Jeff Johnson with 10 points and three rebounds. Utes in firm control. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Come on. Drop the chalupa. Drop it. Drop the chalupa. Yeah. Drop the chalupa. The new Taco Bell chalupa is so good, people won't put it down. With a shell so crispy and flaky on the outside, yet soft and chewy on the inside, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Grab one now for just 99 cents. Move, move. Mine. They're back. Happy New Year, amigos. Four new chihuahuas are ready to party. Get yours now at Taco Bell. your neighbors enjoying a movie on his new Panasonic DVD system from RC Willie, or you'd better call 911. Buy this Panasonic DVD player for just $279 and get five free DVD movies and 28 free rentals. Nobody beats RC Willie, nobody. Then the trucks came over the hill, each one covered in. What? It's all Utah, one of the reasons the heads up play, and we saw it a moment ago. We're gonna look at it again on a Southwest replay. Mike Fusey will set the pick, Frank, that you talked about. Yeah, this is a great pick here. You don't see picks set like that very much by a freshman. There's a, you gotta give the, the offense a credit for taking the defensive man there. But he bent his knees, all right? He got in a good squared up stance, and he took the blow. A lot of times, guys, they duck, they don't wanna take that blow, and they end up fouling, or they move their feet. Uh, Puzi, of course, uh, had excellent high school coaching at Roy High School, and uh, and uh, he uh, he set that pick before. But I, I mentioned that you don't see freshmen. That's that's mature stuff. And that freed up getting the basket because uh, the defensive end was down. Rock and they ended up with five or four. And of course, uh, Rock takes the takes the. You know, this game was won in the first uh, ten minutes. After a timeout. The Utes came out with a great defense. He got ahead, and of course, the style that Utah State plays will not work when you're, you're five, six baskets behind. You cannot. It's it's difficult to be patient. Very difficult. Well, it was Mahorn with a little right. turnaround shot a moment now, ago for the Aggies. And now the Utes are in a delay. They're, they're almost in the four quarters. They've spread the floor, and they're gonna. They're looking now for a layup. Passing game off. I doubt if you'll see it unless the clock is running down and take a, a real outside shot. They're gonna go inside. They're gonna get something slashing to the basket. Five on the clock. There it is, right there. Cullen takes the Great shot to the clock. Yep. Great follow through, just didn't go down. Brennan Ray clears it out to Rock. Aggies will go baseline, and shot won't fall. Brad Wilden. Boozy grabs another rebound. Boozy's impressed me in this ball game. I think he's done a great job. He's a young man who's really matured in yes. the last couple of weeks that we've seen him, Frank. Yeah, he has, you know, because uh, he, uh, you know, comes out of a good program. He's got a good body, worked hard this summer, and now that he's getting a chance to play, and there's pressure on him. He's playing against uh, one of the local schools, you know? 
Now they're a little disorganized. They've got to spread the floor out. That's right. They waste a lot of time just getting organized. And our Utah has uh, done a pretty good job of... Oh, and Colbert beats the short clock with a three. And you know what? Colbert needs that. He needs a lift, all right? You know, he's a good player that's, that's sort of worried about his game instead of playing within himself. Let the game come to him. You know, he's wondering why he isn't doing better in everything that he does. And he'll be just fine. He's a good athlete, probably, probably one of the best athletes on this team. Brown, who struggled here in the second half, can't find the basket. He has nine points, but he's four of 11 from the floor. Shooting oh, still better than he has yeah. over the first uh, four or five games this season. Yeah, he's, he's a good shooter and he's a good player. And what they do now is they isolate. Uh, you're going to wa watch. They're not necessarily looking to score right now. Just hold the ball out. Show good discipline. 12 seconds I, on the You know, Rick Majerus doesn't want to run the score up. It's, it, 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 there's a big enough differential right now. But he, he's practicing something that he may have to use. Music. Great catch and spin move inside. Uh, he may have to use in a, in a game that's a lot closer. He's spreading the floor at the four corners, getting a little pick outside, and then passing to the to the man as he releases. And how about Mike Cusey with his six points? Yeah, he's played a nice game, and we won't forget that pick for a long time that he set at half court either. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I've that may just be our player well, of the game. Frank. You know what happens? I've only set a pick one time like that in the playoffs against the uh, against Porter and, and the Portland Trailblazers. And, and I thought that that was the difference in that series. I really did. And I think that that had a lot to do, you know, with the confidence of Puzzi. I know, I know Coach is going to congratulate him for that pick. That was one of the nicest things, the prettiest things that happened in this game. And often we use a play of the game that is a scoring play or a spectacular play. That was just a solid play. Rock, to his credit, though, as you said, Frank, a lot of players, immature players, come up mad, want to pay back for that. I think Rock recognized, he's, he's a tough kid. Uh, Bernard Rock out of New York, he just recognized that it was part of the game. Yeah, well, and uh, he hits the free throws. Well, he he runs into that a lot in the, you know, in New York, they play, there are poles holding the baskets up in the, in the playground. All those New York kids run into those poles. All right, I mean, that, that is part of growing up in New York. You know, and I so, wondered what it was because they're a little bit off. So yes, they are. They are. They definitely are. <laughs> well, we're inside 40 seconds. Utah just spreading the floor in a passing game. And Colbert takes a shot in the mouth, an inadvertent one. Rick Richards will look at this as a solid win, which he needed right now. You know what I mean? Against a team that has played some pretty good games. You know, a lot of people, Frank, were concerned about the uh, about the slow start for Utah, but last year, in the first nine games, the Utes went five and four. They finished at 28 and five, so they went 23 and one the remainder of the way. So I don't think uh, many people panicked involved with the Ute program, at least, but some fans, I think, were a little bit upset with the loss to well, Weaver State. Well, because of the, the pregame hype. Let me tell you this, I, in my mind, if Metlaw was healthy, they'd be undefeated. I mean, maybe that's a lot to say, but I, I think that much of him, because he makes all the other players better. Well, Utah, the, the good thing about his absence, Frank, is the amount of minutes that other Utes are getting. Of course. Of and that's going to pay off come March. Yeah, you, you, you grow, there's no doubt. But you, you know, you can cry, and you can complain and everything. Injuries are part of the game. And so what you have to do is live through them and hope that other players step up. You know, we always remember Lou Gehrig. You know, uh, you know, I, I can't think of the first place. Wally, Wally Pitt got hurt and uh, or got, uh, got the flu or something and took a day off and <laughs> never got back in again. So. Well, that's going to do it. Mahorn's basket will be the last one in this game, but it won't be enough for Utah State. As Utah in total control since the five-minute mark of the first half and wins it going away 77-42. to 42. Back with a wrap from the Huntsman Center in just a moment.